Okay, uh, magandang araw po mga kaibigan. Welcome po sa Batang Maynila Toits. Meron po kasi akong uh, nabasang comment doon po sa video na in-upload ko na kung saan eh, ginisa po, ha? gisang-gisa. <laughs> ginisa ni Senator Rachis Escudero. Ito pong miyembro ng uh, economic team na nagsusulong ng uh, Maharlika Investment Fund o ito nga tinatawag nilang Maharlika Sovereign Fund. At uh, nabitin po siya mga kaibigan. <laughs> Nabitin po siya siguro na tuwa siya dun sa ginawa ni Senator Chis Escudero. At talaga namang ano eh, bibilib ka mga kaibigan dun sa, sa mga binibitawang salita ni Senator Escudero. At uh, actually meron pong karugtong yan. Ito, ipiplay po natin, panoorin po natin sabay-sabay. Itong uh, second part ng kanyang uh, pagtatanong dito po sa economic team ng, ano, ng uh, Maharlika Investment Pad na nagmukhang ano eh, nagmukhang mga ano, mukhang... Uh, wala mga kaibigan eh, nagmukhang mga tameme eh. At dito mga kaibigan sa panonoorin natin, eh makikita ninyo na mas mukhang uh, magiging tameme. <laughs> etong ano, etong uh, economic team na nagsusulo nga nitong Mahali Kapan. So ito, panoorin po natin mga kaibigan. Now, let's talk about the exemption sa GCG. May I ask why? Essentially, the GCG reviews whoever you will appoint in the board. Yes, sure. Now you created an advisory body to make the corresponding recommendations sans the GCG. May I ask why? How will the operation of MIF be hindered if the appointments to the board go through GCG? The usual course, if it is indeed a GOCC. Um, anong problema ba ng GCG na ayon yung padaanin sa kanila? What will uh, be hindered if it goes through GCG? I understand, DBP, dumadaan sa GCG, di ba? Land Bank, same. So, ano yung hindi nyo magagawa o makukuha kung dumadaan sa GCG, kaya ayaw nyo? What's the logic behind it, ma'am? Um, siguro po, um, given yung experience ng mga government corporations namin in terms of uh, yung pagpapadaan sa GCG dahil sa dami rin po ng ine-evaluate nila yung ginuju diligence po nila so medyo nagkakaroon lang po ng um, time consuming but uh, if it would just be through the advisory body na, na ang composition naman po ang ating Department of Budget and Management Secretary ang NEDA uh, Secretary so there also would be in a best position to be able to ano po, uh, have a determination of who should sit dun po sa, sa board. Ma'am, if it's only time that you're concerned about, I would presume that the GCG is, um, is um, really busy at the beginning of any administration. It's been six months. Halos na fill up na halos lahat ng government corporations. Kung may backlog man sila, tapos na yun. Um, so it's only time? So we enact, we, we, we include as part of the bill, i-prioritize nila to. I mean, if it's only the delay that you're afraid, I'm telling you already, the bill will be delayed because there are so many gaps and loopholes in the bill. So the GCG will have time. You can already start processing some of the names as soon as it is approved. What else, ma'am? Because I wonder why. You don't want the GCG to go through the nominees. I presume all of these will be via a letter of intent signed by the president that will go through the advisory board. The advisory board cannot just take up applications from whoever, diba? as it is with the GCG. May letter of intent, ang secretary of finance, ang presidente, depende sa corporation, which the GCG will process. And if they approve it, then the appointment or the designation will be affected. So, why else, ma'am? Aside from the time constraint, bakit nyo ayaw duman sa GCG? Anong ayaw nyo sa GCG kung, ayaw, kung bakit nyo ayaw padanin? Aside from the time. Um, hindi lang, um, if I may, um, Your Honor, hindi lang po kasi naman uh, in terms of the nominations to the board ang ginagawa ng GCG. Marami rin po silang ginagawa evaluating po yung performance scorecard and the like. No? So, maraming preoccupation na might also uh, delay 
in terms of the nominations to the board for the Maharlika Fund. And uh, we see naman po with this, uh, the uh, advisory committee, na they would be in a best position to be able to know who should be the, the best minds to be able to uh, make the MIC function very well. So, yun po yung the rationale behind what bakit hindi na lang po dadaan sa GCG. The main reason why GCG has a permanent term is for, to guarantee independence. All of the people you're mentioning, DBM, DOF, and EDA, are all coterminous with the president and serve at his pleasure. They're all coming from one side. In fact, the main reason why GCG is there is to provide a different and separate perspective. Dahil wala naman sigurong isang tao nagmamayari ng lahat ng talino, galing at magandang intensyon para sa bansa, di ba? Maganda rin mapakinggan yung iba. And the same is true here. If you really want this MIF to succeed, the more heads that are participating um, in crafting policies and being a part of it, I think it would be better and best than simply all coming from one and the same group, all obeying the command and will of the president because they're all coterminous with the president and serve at his pleasure, unlike the GCG. Um, moving to the next point, ma'am. Why exemption from the procurement law? Including purchase of ano bang papers yung sinasabi niyo exemption? Pati supplies niyo, exempted sa procurement law? Ah, papel, stapler, ribbon, computer? Um, I think ang sinasabi po sa procurement law are technical services. Yung pong pag -e evaluate um, like if they're going to get po yung, uh, yung fan managers. So that would be exempted from the Government Procurement Act. It did not specify here. It's, it, gave, it simply gave a blanket exemption to procurement law. Again, I'm talking about purchase of supplies, not only fund managers. I'm talking about purchase of vehicles. I'm talking about rental or purchase of a building or rental of a building or office space. I'm talking of almost everything and anything. Would you change it later on, ma'am, to specify? Um, siguro po, uh, there would have to be uh, some clarity. Pero po sa Section 32, nakalagay po doon yung engagement of professional or technical services needed in the selection of investments as authorized in this act, such as fund management, investment, etc. po. I agree, ma'am. Pero hindi nga in-specify kung anong kasama. Exempted lang. So, yun lang ba ang intention nyo? So, we will specify that. I'd like to take up tax exemptions. Exempt from local and national taxes, direct, indirect, um, national internal revenue code, local government code, all funds, assets, and properties, all revenue, income, investment earnings, as well as accruals thereto, purchase of supplies, equipment, papers, or documents. Exempted that? Does Land Bank or DBP enjoy the same? Ma'am, from Land Bank? No, sir. What kind of exemption do you enjoy from national and local taxes? Any? None, Your Honor. DBP? None, po, Your Honor. Um, is this the first of its kind, Ma'am Lea? No, I, I don't know. I'm, the perhaps PAGCOR is. Or Napocor used to be to a certain degree, but um yes, yes, yes. Um the intention na lang, sir. Because uh, the intention is that um given that uh for gun taxes to be paid, it will go back to the fund. So um, iikot po yung pondo ng pera, mas mapapalago, mas magagamit. So I think that was the intention behind I, I agree, ma'am, but um the previous you've been the national treasurer for quite some time. You've seen the policy of um, previous secretaries of finance, regardless of administration. It's easier to have a uniform rule applicable to all than to create exemptions because it will wreak havoc on the system. You yourself said it will go to government anyway. Diba? Doc stamps, babayaran. Final tax sa sale ng, uh, on, on income, sale ng shares of stock. Gobyerno pa rin pupunta. Capital gains tax, documentary stamp tax, transfer tax, gobyerno naman lahat pupunta yan. So, why wreak havoc um, by exempting this entity? And again, I think this is the first time that, to my knowledge, ah, 
na merong entity ganito ka lawak yung exemption na binibigay natin when in fact it will just simply go from one pocket to another of government. So if you want to preserve the fund then we can put here and then all taxes paid shall be reverted back to the company by way of additional investment of the national government but let them pay the taxes in the ordinary course. Di ba mama simple yan? Kindly consider it, ma'am. Because you will you will have encountered several problems, purchase of supplies, equipment, papers, documents, biglang tax exempt, exempt sa duties, exempt lahat, ma'am, magulo yun, ha? Magulo siya. And it will be a gaping loophole in so far as entities selling to the MIF, MIC is concerned because they will claim it's, it's sold to them even if it is not and claim the exemption. Not MIC, MIF, ha? The entity selling. Kindly consider that too, ma'am. Mr. Chair, I will yield to our other colleagues. Um, given that I'm sure they have other questions as well, um, I will await the reply and the feedback and the submissions and position papers from the economic team headed by uh, Ma'am Leia and as well as from the GPPB. Um, for me to continue with my um, interjections and interpolations on the bill. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Hello, mga nanonood dyan. Mag-subscribe po kayo sa Batang Maynila Toys. Ay, mali din ang pala. <laughs>